Hello Ratbags, it's Plays Games, and welcome to Game Alert. Seven Days to Die has added its update at last. I told you guys about this a couple of days ago. Traders have finally arrived on Xbox One and the PS4. Traders, vendor machines, they're all been added in as well as a bunch of new locations for procedurally generated maps. You can see on the PS4 it's 863.8 megabytes. As you can see on the Xbox One, it's 3.61 gigabytes. For more detailed analysis of the patch notes, go and check out the previous video I did. The link will be down below. So, let's go and see if we can find ourselves a trader. As you can see, I found our first trading post. Now, some important things to remember about trading posts. It does shut at 10 to 10 at night, and it doesn't open again until 6.05 in the morning. Currently on the console, on the PS4, anytime you go near it, it will kind of just bump you back a little bit when it's not open, as you can see, like that. So if you're thinking of taking over one of these trading posts and making it your home, think again. It will boot you out if the time goes into the place when it's meant to be shut. Now there are five currently NPC trader posts around the world, and they're pretty much spread out throughout the land. Take a look at this map and you can see the coordinates for all the rest of them. Trader Trader Joel is situated at 931 North, 1055 West. Trader Hugh is 1320 North, 1435 East. And you can see that one's pretty much in the snow biome, just on the outskirts of it. Trader Bob is where I am at now. It's 1320 South, 1035 East. And Trader Jimmy is 1393 South, 790 West. Pretty much in the green grasslands. So now it's open, let's go and take a look. You can see the sign has changed. There are little things to loot, just like normal. And this is what you're going to need to actually buy stuff. Duke's Casino Tokens. They weren't useless, so I hope you haven't been scrapping them. And there you go. Make sure to shut the door behind you. And we are in. We are in the actual trading post. Now this is the brand new thing they've also added, is the vending machines. If you don't know about vending machines, you can actually rent one out. So you basically pop whatever item you want inside, once you've paid for the cost of it. When you open up the vending machine, go to the rent sign, and click it on there, and it'll tell you exactly how much you need. 2,500. And obviously just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to, much it costs. So if you click on the little rent symbol up here, you can see it costs 2,500. You just press up on the D-pad. So to actually rent one of these vending machines out, you basically put items inside it once you've rented it by clicking on the item and then pressing the up on the D-pad. And there you go, I've just added it in. You can put a bunch of different items in there and you can choose how much you'll actually sell of it. Then you can change the price of it if you want. Click on the item and you can increase the price if you want or you can decrease. Now again, it seems a bit stupid doing this on just a local multiplayer game, particularly when you can only have four people on, and that's only when you have your console on. But NPCs do buy items from you as well. You may have to leave it in there a little while, but once you come back, you should see that some of your items have been bought. If you need to reset anything, just press down on the D-pad, and it will put it back at the starting price that it thinks. So whatever you want to put in, like I said, just hover over it, press the triangle button, and then just press up on the D-pad. And then when players want to buy it, they can simply click on it. And if they've got enough of the actual casino coins, they can actually buy it. The next one you've got is the food and water vending machine. In this one, it simply gives you some bog standard items that you can buy to heal or feed yourself. And you can see it's quite costly for some of them. This one restocks in three days, so check back on it to see what other new stuff it'll have inside. Once inside, you'll see there's a bunch of different things. Much of it's not much use, other than maybe getting some extra quick resources without fear of being attacked by a zombie. But of course you will meet the actual NPC traders. Hello Bob. We have great prices. Now Bob has got all the items and the weapons. Now it can be quite expensive to buy some of these. So you're really going to have to weigh up whether or not it's worth it. But he certainly does have a lot of items. Some will have better than others and it does refresh 
You can sell stuff directly to him. Whether or not you'll get a good price for it, that's another matter. And the more you sell to him, the cheaper his items become. You can see he's increasing my barter. Much obliged, if we take a look at that one. Reduce the cost of goods and sell them for more dukes by improving this skill. So the more points you put into this, obviously the cheaper items are going to become. And the other one you might need to know about is the secret stash. Traders have better items in their secret stash by increasing this perk. So to unlock it though, we need bar to 20. So what is the point in actually using the vending machines if you can sell everything to a trader? Well, if you put it into the vending machines, you'll actually get a better price for it as long as they buy it. It's just going to take a longer time. And if you need to sell stuff on the quick, then you may need to do it manually. These areas are really good for early game. So if you do come across one and you've not explored very well, you can come in here and loot and be really safe. And it's a particularly good place to get bed rolls. The third vending machine you can buy is a player owned vending machine, but you can only get these through the secret stash. So you're going to have to increase your barter ability with the actual NPCs so that you can unlock their secret stash. Top tip is not to increase the price too much. Go ahead and increase it a little, but if it's not selling, then maybe go and reduce it. Of course, real players can come and buy these items too. It just depends if you've left it open for other people to join your world. The secret stash will have rarer items in it, so it's definitely worth levelling up the barter points so that you can unlock the secret stash. And different NPCs will have different types of secret stashes. It's really good to see it finally come to console. So there you go guys, quick guide on NPCs, trader posts, vending machines and where to find them. I'm Jay Plays Games. this has been a Game Alert show. Make sure you've got notifications turned on so you get all the updates about your latest and favourite games. If you want to see more 7 days, let it know in the comments section. I really am debating whether or not to set up a brand new Let's Play. If I get enough support, I definitely will do one. I'm Jay Plays Games. I'll see you ratbags later on.